Hi everyone, it's Anne from Lolly and Grace and welcome to part three of the Lolly and Grace needle painting stitch along. I hope you had a good time in part two working on the leaves. For part three, we're going to be filling in this big flower with lots of color, obviously. Now, this technique is essentially the same as it was for the leaves, so if you haven't watched that video, you'll probably want to go do that before you start to work on this flower. So what I'm going to do now is walk you through how to fill in the petals of this big flower. All right, when we were working on the leaves, we made lots of straight stitches that were various lengths, leaving a feathered edge where two colors would meet. And each shape we filled in was essentially a rectangle with the changes in color placed kind of like this. So if there's your sort of your rectangle shape, you had a change in color here and here. So all of our straight, all of our stitches went this way. And then we came in with the next color. and went down and so the color change happened here and here. So for instance on the leaf what we did was made our stitches, filled in this whole area, making sure that the color kind of bled over. We had some stitches that went crossed over this indicator of where the two colors would meet. Second color came up and go up into those stitches, splitting the th strands. And so there you go. So that's how each section was filled in. But you can see that each area is basically a big box. So the question uh, is, how do we fill in these big wavy areas, these very kind of flowing wavy areas on the big flower? So you're going to start out essentially the same way you did over here. So here's my, let's say this whole, this section is all one color, it's all this orange color. The color chart will indicate what color to go where. But you start out the same, make those stitches, different lengths, go up into the strands, split the strands, feather your edges, all the, as you work all the way down in this same color. Now, what you're, how you're going to blend the two colors in this section and the section next to it is along this long edge. So at, whereas over here we blended the colors together like, that's hard to explain, like this, we're going to do it along this edge. So as I'm working the stitches all the way down, I'm going to occasionally let a stitch come over into the area that is for the next color. So this whole area gets filled in. Keep working. And you can see I've got some random stitches that would go into this area. When it comes time for the second color, same thing. Start your stitches, but now I can take a little bit of this color and I can pop over into the other section and go in between there where I would have left some little spaces. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let some random stitches come over into the area next to it. So as I keep adding my stitches, you can see now where the two colors, I can come over occasionally and make a couple of stitches over there, and you can see now the color blending happens along this long edge. The other consideration here is not just uh, blending the colors along the edges, but the direction of your stitches. Uh, what I always try to think of when I'm working on these areas is go with the flow. I mean, these are sort of wavy, kind of like river-like fluid areas. So I, I tell myself, go with the flow. So let's say, for instance, let me get a different color. Let's, I'm going to show you over here. Uh, I would stitch next to the place that I just did. But as I'm going over here, I'm going to start out going this direction. You can sort of see that area angles that way. And then as I work around this corner, so the first stitches went that direction. As I work around this corner, I'm going to gradually have my stitches start going that direction, right here. Now that I'm in this area and they might be a little bit more angled, a little bit more like that. 
as I come down into this area, they're going to be more straight up and down like that. So you can see uh, the other thing, there's two things you really want to sort of avoid while you're working on these areas. You don't want a radical change of direction. So in other words, I wouldn't want to have some stitches that are going this way and then have one that goes that way. And then another one that goes that way on top of each other. You're just going to end up with sort of a tangled mess. You want to very gradually change these directions as you're working down so that you get a nice flow. The other reason, uh, the other thing you want to do is keep your stitches short enough so that that's an easy thing to do. It's hard to make a change in direction with really, a, a, it's hard to make a gradual change in direction in an angle when you've got these really super crazy long stitches. So shorter stitches work a little bit better. Um, let me think. I think that's really the main thing. It's it's very similar to the leaves. It's just you're blending the colors along the long edge and then gradually changing your direction. So now let me show you what it looks like on the actual flower. All right, you can see here, maybe better close up now, all of the stitching I've already done on these other petals. And so you can see how the, the sort of the flow of the stitches and how the colors blend together. I am going to start stitching on this petal. I'm going to start on this big area right here. I have two strands of DMC thread on my needle. Now let me say that I really like the way two strands looks on this thing. And I was about three petals, I had three petals completed and it occurred to me, you know, I probably really could have used Three, stand, three strands instead of the two strands. It would have stitched up a little bit faster. It will be a little bit chunkier, a little bit more textured, but I think it would be just fine, really. So if you would like to use three strands instead of two strands, I think it will be just fine and it may go a little bit quicker. So having said that, I'm still using two strands because that's what I had started with and I didn't want to rip all that stitching out. I am, like I said, I'm going to do this petal right here and I'm going to start up here. I, like I've said before, I tend to work left to right. So I'm going to leave this one alone for the moment because I want to start up here first. Generally, I would probably start stitching here, but whatever. I'm going to start right here. And just like I talked about before, I will start at a gradual angle with relatively short stitches. Try to go as fast as I can here. Now in this next row, I'll go up and I will go in between the stitches that I've already made. Jump over just a little bit. And make sure I'm leaving, even though I'm working in the same color, I'm gonna work to leave a feathered edge along, along this edge down here as I work my way down the shape. Just kind of working back and forth, left to right, just filling in as I go, making sure I don't leave any gaps in the white fabric, you know, in between the stitches. If I do find gaps, which is common, I will often turn the hoop a different way, look at it in different light and see a little gap that I've left. You can always just go back in there and fill in those gaps later on if you see them. All right, so now I'm coming over here to the side, the long edge where the two colors meet, and I'm gonna pop over in here and make just a random stitch kind of by itself. Just let that stay there. So that I've got a little bit of color going over into that next area. Now I'm coming to an area where I'm gonna change the direction of my stitches just gradually up here. You can see they were traveling at more of an angle like that. Now that I'm down here, I'm just gradually shifting the angle a little bit more like that. But still just filling in. Do a really short stitch over there on the side. 
And as I mentioned with the leaves, you don't want to split these black outlines that you've already done. You want to kind of make sure the stitches, the colored stitches are sort of tucked under them because you don't want to mm, minimize that black outline that you've already got there. So as I come down in this area now, I will gradually be changing the direction again to a little bit more straight up and down, maybe more like this direction. I'm over on the side here again, so I'm going to leave, I'm going to put a stitch or two in here that's just over into that other section. Now let me keep stitching this area and I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit here and painfully watch me stitch this whole thing. Got a couple of gaps I can see. I need to go fill in one right there. So let me finish out this color section and I will, you can see that, and then I'll come back and I will show you the second section. Okay, I have finished stitching all of that section. Hopefully you could tell on the sped up portion how I gradually was changing the direction from up here, from this way, and then kind of went more that direction. And then by the time I got down here, the direction was going a little bit more that way. From over here, this way, and then by, I got up, by the time I got over here, it was kind of going this way. And you can also see how I left a feathered edge on this side where it's going to go into this color and I left a random sort of feathered edge over here on this side where this color is going to go. Now I do want to say that um, you know this is a lot of stitches but they're certainly not difficult stitches it's just it's really sometimes the best kind of stitching it's just mindless it's like filling in a coloring book you're just you don't have to think really hard about it you just get to go with the flow and color in with thread and you just don't have to really think all that hard about it. It's really, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's a lot of stitches and so don't be intimidated because you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh, scary color blending and ooh, I not, I don't think I can do that. That's too scary. It's so simple and it's really, really relaxing. Although it's mini stitches, it's not difficult stitches. And I want everybody to feel like that they can do this because you can. I know you can. So now I'm going to, I will quickly, let me see, I'll do a couple of other sections and speed those up so you can see them. So you can kind of get another, uh, a feel for how they work together. So let me go do that. Okay, I think you can see that uh, how all of these, uh, these two sections, or three sections, sorry, blend together. Um, hopefully you could see as I was stitching that how I gradually changed the angle of my stitches. Uh, so really all that's left for me to do is just finish up this last petal and it will be time for us to move on to part four. Now part four is going to be really fun because we're going to do the center section and it's a really cool stitch. It makes a really neat effect and I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully you will join me for part four and I hope you have a great time stitching these big petals with this fun, filling, colorful, coloring book style of stitching. All right, I'll see you next time.